G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. A really, really quick, not so weekly, weekly news because I'm just here to film uh, the last piece. I have to redo a piece on the UHF shootout because I got it all wrong. I stuffed up. So <laughs> I was reviewing the stuff before I uploaded it and I thought, oh no, I hate it when that happens. You spend so much time, you go through the edit process, suddenly you find, oh man, why didn't I spot that before? That's a glaring mistake. So back here filming that. So when you see the shootouts, you may find in some parts I have a long beard, some parts I have a short beard, some parts I have my jacket on, some parts I have a t-shirt on because it's been filmed over such a period of time and I've had to retake parts in order to get it right because if it's not right, it's not worth putting up. So that's the question everyone was going to ask anyway, wasn't it? Okay, um, quick things coming up. FlexiBee's coming together. It's really cool, little frame. FlexiBee, wonderful. Um, plastic. You'll see more of that uh, flexion. Got ordered some motors. The motors have finally arrived for this and a couple of other frames I've been building so I can get those underway. The other frames include one from Shen Drones. From Shen Drones. This isn't the frame, this is a piece of cardboard. But the Shen Drones frame is really interesting. It has the rear motors at 45 degrees. Looks like 45 degrees. Um, so instead of being tilt like having both motors tilted like on the mini member, just the rear motors are tilted. What does that do? How does that affect the handling? Interestingly enough, the guy from Mini Member, he said Try that, try just tilting the back motors. And I did, and actually handles better, handles better. So this is gonna be really interesting. Will we see a lot of these mini quads coming out with tilted rear motors and flat front ones? I don't know, we'll have a look. And I'll give you my thoughts on that, as well as how well this frame goes together. And of course, he's the guy that also sent me the wooden frame. Wooden frame, wood fly, who knows? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, what else, I've got a list of stuff here. Um, sky zones, my sky zone goggles. I love them, they work really well, no problems. Uh, but the 3D sky zones that I got sent, they stopped working. I only used them half a dozen to a dozen times. Uh, they've had hardly any use. Went to turn them on uh, because I was going to show the media what it looks like to fly FPV. Pfft, nothing. But worse than nothing, because if it's nothing, it's usually like simple, like a broken wire or, the, or you know, plug or battery's flat or something. But no, the backlights come on, but no one's home. No beeps, no snow, no menus, nothing. So, oh, so I've thrown it on the bench, thrown them on the bench, pulled them apart. And you'll see a video coming up. I'm going to attempt to fix them myself, go through, but it's a good chance to take a look at how well these things are put together. And oh, when you see the video, you will know, but that's coming up. I've just basically got to do a little bit more fault finding. Hopefully I'll be able to fix them. Have not fixed them yet? Hopefully I will. But you'll find out one way or the other in that upcoming video. Um, what else? Um, head play, speaking of video stuff for your FPV, head play versus quantum video visor, which is the best? Well, pretty easy to tell, isn't it? But maybe it's not because it depends on what you're looking for. There's, there is no, off, seldom is there a best in this hobby. You know, people say, oh, this is the best, and that's the best. No, no, no. It's the best for you, or the best for someone else. Everyone's requirements are somewhat different. So, some one person's best might be another person's also ran. So I'm going to give you the, the, the facts and do a comparison between the head plays and the quantum video visor, because to be honest, the quantum will suit some people more than the head play. It might be quite surprising for you to find that out, but the, the head play is quite a bit more expensive. It's higher resolution, and it comes with a built-in um, receiver. The, the quantum's not, not so expensive, really cheap actually, don't have a built-in receiver, and uh, lower resolution. So why would anyone opt for the quantum over the head play? Well, you'll find out, and as I say, um, the, both of them will be best for somebody. I mean, this way, they both work pretty well to give you a bit of a heads up. <laughs> um, but, you know, they're not necessarily as clear cut as you might think. And you'll find out why when I show you that video, that comparison, that head to head shootout. Right, what else have I got on my list of things? Um, I'm just going out, hopefully, if the rain stops, to test the Surveil Zone unbreakable propellers. I've got some six inch, I've cut down to five. And we all know that the five inch bull nose, which are basically six inch um, HQ props cut down to five, they work really well. Do the Saval Zone props work just as well if you cut them down because it'd be nice to have some bullnose props that didn't break. And if this works, I'll be buying more of the six inch ones instead of the fives because to be honest, the five inch ones are super tough, but they, you do miss that punch. You do miss that power that you get from something like the gem fans or the, the, the bullnose props. So yeah, maybe have the best of both worlds, I don't know. Um, what else is on my list here? Bonsai FPV wing, yes. Again, waiting for some weather. Look, I've got my jacket on, it's cold, it's winter. It's midwinter here in New Zealand, July. Woo. And uh, so, Flying opportunities for fixed wing are pretty limited, uh, as if they weren't limited enough already by the rules and regulations. So uh, as soon as the um, weather clears, we'll get a nice fine calm day, the bonsai wing will be out, I can finish the video, you'll be able to see how to build your own really, really cheap fixed wing FPV setup because I haven't forgotten you fixed wingers. Yes, I know, in the winter it's hard to, uh, 
hard to sort of um, do much other than multi-rotor stuff around here, but I haven't forgotten the fixed wing people. And that's pretty much it. So I'll be doing a couple of other videos coming up. Rule changes in New Zealand, law changes, major changes to the law affecting radio control model aircraft. And I'm going to do a special video for New Zealand viewers and maybe people overseas that are interested about how these rule changes affect your ability and your rights and your responsibilities when you go to fly your models out there because there are some really sweeping changes, some of them bigger belief. And I've, have, I've had to ask CAA for some clarifications and to be honest, they don't know. They've made the rules, they've been passed through Parliament, signed into effect on the 1st of August, but CAA couldn't give me an answer. They've had to go away and consult to find out the answer to some very, very simple questions. So if CAA can't answer the questions, how are people flying models supposed to understand what the hell they're supposed to do or not do? To the credit, CAA have said they'll come back to me as late, you know, possibly next week. As soon as that information comes in, I'll finish that video so you can watch and see what's happening here in New Zealand. Another video I'm doing, um, again, this explains why there's been not that many videos this month because I've been doing so much prep work and editing work and it'll all come in a big rush hopefully in a week or so. I'll be doing a couple of videos a day will be posted and you will be able to keep up with them. Uh, but video on drones, drones, and I'll be explaining what we should be doing as a community to try and address this problem of drones being vilified by the media. Every time you see a uh, any story relating to drones, it's death and disaster, you know, near miss, you know, um, near catastrophe averted as airliner dodges drone on flight path, all that sort of stuff, you know, it's all bullshit. I mean, okay, I'm not going to understate it, there is definitely a risk. People should not be flying these damn things near airports or in flight lines or doing stupid things. But, but if the worst does happen, just what are the chances of a Phantom 2 taking down a 747? You might be surprised with the answer to that. And I'm going to back up uh, my assertions with evidence, not just possibilities and speculation with evidence. And that's the way you present an argument. There you go. So stay tuned. All that stuff coming up. Look at me. I'm sweating because it's cold, but I'm working so hard. <laughs> oh, my phone fell out. Excuse me. Uh, anyway, so thank you for watching. I've got to get back to the bench and fix my microphone. Bye for now. See you soon.